Hello everyone, this is LockOS, and welcome back to Star Citizen. So, yesterday I ended up taking a break. Thanksgiving ran fairly late, which is to be expected of family and all that other stuff. Um, they're on a vastly different schedule than I am. So, in any case, uh, we're going to cover today uh, Anvil Aerospace and uh, Mirai and Misk. Uh, we are going to obviously do Anvil Aerospace as a, as a separate video and then do Mirai and Misk as another separate video, but I'll be basically doing back to back recording sessions for both. So, so on the 20th, so thankfully, um, we were able to at least take care of those two. And that is a good thing about um, IAE and Invictus uh, for both this year and f uh, future years. They do tend to run each manufacturer or set of manufacturers in some cases for multiple days. So you don't have to worry about missing one, a manufacturer, because uh, they'll, they're the, if you miss a uh, service citizen for a day, at the very least, you'll be able to come back the next day and pick up uh, that manufacturer that you missed on the uh, on its debut on its debut day and pick it up on the second day, plus another one that'll pop in. That being said, uh, Drake Interplanetary and Argo Consolidator and Outland Great. Great Cat Industrial and Kruger uh, Intergalactic have left the IAE. And on the 24th today, we have Anvil Aerospace, Mirai, and Misk as the manufacturers that are going on today. Anvil is on the, in the Apex Hall. Mirai and Misk is in the Zenith Hall. And we're starting to get towards the very end of the IAE. Uh, we have RSI tomorrow. And something interesting... Um, happens towards the very end of the IAE. Uh, we're going to have RSI f on Saturday and Sunday. But on Sunday, instead of having um, Mirai and Misk for an additional day, um, the Best in Show ships will pop up for Mirai and uh, will pop into Mirai and Misk's hall. So of the Best in Show ships, which are the four um, quarter finalists for the uh, ship sh uh, showdown that uh, CIG does every uh, September, and weapons and armor are going to be uh, showcased as well. So you'll be able to actually rent and or buy uh, specialized or uh, special weapons and armor packs. Also, uh, we have, and then on the 27th, uh, they're going to, uh, not going to be any manufacturers. Uh, it's just going to be the IAE finale. Uh, the last three days are mainly basically an online show. Uh, I believe all the, I believe there are going to be uh, ship terminals here in the Zenith Hall. And in the ship terminals in the Zenith Hall, uh, you'll be able to rent every single ship in the verse um, through the terminals. You'll be able to walk around them, walk around them, or see them. They won't be on display, but you'll at least be able to rent them. And more importantly, um, the online store will have everything there for like three days, so you'll be able to make your final purchases on the online store. Anvil Aerospace is here today, and while well, Aegis Dynamics is the largest. Uh, manufacturer taking up the entirety of the Tobin Expo Center halls. Um, Anvil comes into a close second, especially when it comes into th in w with their uh, military manufacturing, because they have a whole lot of different ships. Uh, Anvil mostly seems to focus on smaller ships, so we don't have to worry. Um, so there's not going to be a lot of interiors, but we still have quite a bit. Um, Anvil also has quite a lot of ships in the Hall of Viewers, so we're going to be plenty of time uh, spending time just going into the uh, Hall of Viewers and looking around. So let's work our way clockwise. In fact, we're going to... Because... Um, how do I want to do this? We'll start with the Terrapin, work our way to the Hawk, and then we'll go into Expo Apex Hall 3, and... Go into the uh, displays through there. Uh, first up, we have the Anvil Terrapin. This is basically a heavily armored recon ship. Uh, it does have two. Uh, it does have this um, uh, pilot uh, slaved turret down here uh, that has two guns on it. Uh, but other than that, uh, this is more or less a. It can be piloted uh, by a single pilot. Uh, you get a single uh, pilot here doing all the flying, and then when it comes time to do the scanning, uh, they can sit in the scanning seat and do the uh, scanning here. You can also man this as a two-person uh, two craft. Um, however, keep in mind, there's only a bed 
for a single person. Uh, I do believe also that there is a... Oh, game uh, freaked out there for a second. I was worried, I was worried that we were going to have a crash. Uh, there is also, however, really only a closet for like one person. Uh, there is a decent number of gun racks and pistol racks, however, so you can easily have um, enough guns for two people and then maybe have like a spare suit uh, in here for something. Other than that, uh, the ship is actually equipped with uh, various panels for um, uh, components. Swap them out. It also, in addition to the single bed and uh, a microwave and little food area prep area above the bed here, there is actually a uh, single-person bathroom back here, which is the, toilet, the toilet-shower combo that is popular in a lot of spaceships. Again, more component access back there. You also have a lot of component access up here in this little walkway right here, and... Um, like I said, that's the scanning, that's the uh, chair for the radar operator. And before we head out, I do want to showcase the uh, pilot seat here. For exploration slash uh, recon ship, uh, like I mentioned, it's pretty, it's, it is heavily armored. Uh, also, it does actually have... Uh, a relatively constricted view. Um, you can't really look out to the sides. Uh, you can't look out a little bit to the sides and up. However, I do believe uh, when there is a second mode to the ship where the armor plates close in, and when the armor plates close in, I do believe uh, these top windows here to the back and right and above you and up to the top and left uh, armor plates come over and close on top of them, so your uh, your view gets restricted to just this little bit of a forward view right here and up above. Um, but as the ship is heavily armored, uh, and as much a recon ship, not a uh, combat ship, uh, your main purpose uh, your main purpose is to kind of like stay hidden, out of sight, and then if you do get engaged, uh, use your armor and defense and defenses to buy you enough time to either uh, wait for escorts or. Uh, Engage your engines and uh, quantum out of trouble. But that is the Anvil Terrapin. There is no internal cargo space, by the way, so it is a difficult mission to do. Uh, it is a difficult ship to do uh, some missions in, only if because uh, there is no internal box space. But uh, it is going to eventually be a very useful ship for doing recon, uh, just because it does have a very large radar up top. Next up is a. Entry uh, level uh, light fighter, the Anvil Arrow. This is very similar to the. It's basically Anvil's competitor to the Aegis Gladius. Uh, very similar, uh, very similar uh, aerodynamics. Very similar agility, speed, uh, maneuverability. Um, Anvil, with its arrow, however, uh, where Aegis is more. Focused on uh, missile ga uh, missile uh, gameplay, uh, the Anvil has more guns. So it has two guns here, uh, right, uh, right on the inboard of where the wing, uh, pi uh, where the wings fold up. It does have three size two missile mounts, whereas the you know it has a uh, yeah three uh, it has I believe. Um, Mounts for three size two missiles, whereas the Aegis, or as far as the Aegis Gladi uh, Gladius, however, has uh, mounts for four size two missiles, but it swaps out one of these size two missiles for a size, uh, mounts one of the, it mounts one size three missile instead of two size two missiles as a standard mount. So, so slightly reduced missile armament on the uh, Anvil Arrow. Um, also, I believe it's top turret has two size one guns, so it's a slightly different uh, weapon loadout in terms of uh, slightly more guns. Um, I think some of the guns are slightly uh, smaller sized, um, but there is more of a focus on a gun armament than a missile armament on the Anvil Arrow. Otherwise, it's very similar to the Aegis uh, Gladius. Now... Something that sounds very similar in name to the Gladius is the Gladiator. And this is basically a carrier bomber for the UEE. 
Uh, this is very much heavily focused on missile uh, capacity and uh, capability. So it has two size, uh, I believe these are two size, two uh, or three guns that the pilot controls. However, there's also a uh, two size two guns that the uh, turret gunner up there also controls. And those can only be controlled by the uh, turret gunner nowadays. Uh, there used to be, it used to be the case that the pilot can control both the uh, wing mounted guns and the turret mounted guns if there was no turret gunner. However, unfortunately, uh, nowadays they made it so that uh, you need a turret gunner in order to control those uh, turret guns. Other than that, the Gladiator has a massive amount of missiles. It has on each wing four size two missiles for a total of eight size two missiles. And it has, if I can open up the bay here, It's not going to let me. Oh, my exterior. Oh, well. Um, this is an older ship, by the way. Uh, it really needs an update. Um, but anyways. In this... Uh... In this uh, torpedo bay back here, there are four size five torpedoes. So you have eight size two missiles, four size two torpedoes. This is very much a missile boat. However, the problem, like I uh, mentioned with all ships that focus on torpedo armament or missile armament is, unfortunately, uh, poss uh, p possibly due to server bad uh, um, server performance and possibly due to the fact that they're still reworking um some of the uh, flight dynamics and missile gameplay. Missiles are very much sort of hit or miss, and they're not usually very reliable over the... Generally, they haven't been... Uh, missiles have not been reliable in uh, at least the uh, Persistent Universe for a very long while, so I can't recommend this ship as is right now, uh, mainly because missile armament is just very unreliable in the verse. Uh, Arena Commander... Okay, uh, might have some luck. So if you want to uh, have, uh, if you want to try out the ship, uh, try to be, earn it in Arena Commander and like have fun with it in Arena Commander. Um, otherwise, I can't. Like I said I can't recommend buying the ship right now just because of how bad missile performance is in game. Also, if I can, let's see here to show you the pilot seat here. If the game doesn't want to freak out, here we go. Well, you can't even see it right there. Um, doors aren't even animating right now. This ship is very old. It's, it's, uh, this is a very much a very old, uh, ship design that CIG released a long time ago, and it's going to be in dire need of an upgrade. Uh, it might get, uh, now the ship will probably get an upgrade and, uh, be brought up to standard in, uh, a couple of patches, uh, or when, uh, they start bringing in more of the Squadron 42 stuff, but I wouldn't, um, hold your breath. And while this, and while this ship has gotten some love, um, the, uh, Gladiator is gonna definitely get some more love in the future, so I would hold off on it for right now, um, wait and see how it turns out in the future, um, before I decide to get it. The only reason I bought one is because I love the idea of a uh, torpedo bomber, and I, at the time it was actually fairly up to standard, but it's really fallen behind on the times lately. Now, a ship that hasn't fallen behind on the times, and I also own, um, way before it got uh, a lot of its price hikes, was the Anvil Carrick. This is, the Anvil Carrick is an exploration ship. And its main purpose is to go out into the black and just survive as long as it can using its massive uh, amount of storage and explore, 
gather material, gather um, any kind of like possible maybe loot it can find. If it finds any like valuable salvage or cargo, it can bring it in here. If you want to go out and do some mining and maybe you find some like really rare ores, you can uh, mine them and bring them in here. Drop off the cargo here. Um, you can also use it kind of as a transport ship for cargo trading. It does actually have quite a bit of cargo space in here. Um, it's also really good, because I should probably go back in here to the, uh, ramp here. Because this cargo bay can actually hold, um, a decent number of the smaller, uh, ground vehicles. Like, it can definitely hold a cyclone, or some grav bikes. So you can use this ship also, in addition to using the cargo bays to hold, um, various loot that you find. You can also use this, uh, cargo bay to hold... At least this front uh, little cargo bay here to hold a couple of ground vehicles. And you could use this for as a, as a uh, org ship to transport people into battle for ground operations. Also, this is one of my favorite parts about this ship. It has this little ramp here that you can uh, raise up. Uh, you can use it to take cover behind... Uh, if, some, if you're getting into an FPS combat, uh, you drop the bridge and then you drop this ramp and all of a sudden people are trying to shoot at you, you can use this to, as cover. Um, but it's mainly used to actually stop ground vehicles from riding up right against this door. Also should mention that uh, up here, there's actually a service ladder that runs up through the middle of the ship. So there's that too. But we're going to go ahead and uh, go to the back of the cargo bay. There's also an elevator I should mention. Another thing I should mention, um, is also the ship also has an elevator towards the uh, middle of the ship that runs all the way up uh, through to almost the top of the ship. There is also a docking collar on the side of the ship here. That is the small docking collar that hasn't been implemented yet. Um, I'm quite sure when CIG, uh, I'm quite sure I've said that many times that the small docking collar hasn't been implemented yet. Um, I'm quite sure when CIG does implement these small docking rings, uh, they're going to have to go back to a lot of ships to get them working. Also, you have some suit lockers down here for people to do the, their EVA, uh, for pre preparation for EVA activities. However, I do believe those are not the only suit lockers that you have on the ship. So you can have these suit lockers be used for EVA suits go back through all the various cargo modules and eventually you, you will be able to replace these cargo modules with uh, science modules and other kind of modules it just right now um, their only purpose is uh, cargo uh, back here on the uh, very tail end of the cargo deck uh, after the three modular base you do actually have more suit and weapons lockers so these could be more of your FPS uh, suit lockers and uh, you have all your gun lockers here. And at the very back at the end of the bottom level of the ship, you have the aft turret access. So you, one of your turret access is, is, access is, is here in the very back of the ship. Other than that, uh, we get to the rear elevator. The rear elevator... is the uh, main is your biggest elevator in the ship as well as also your it's the elevator that grants you the access to the most amount of the ship uh, because it goes all the way down from the sub deck here all the way up to this very top deck which is the cartography deck so here we are on the uh, quote unquote habitation deck the elevator here uh, for the habitation deck is at the very tail end of this deck. You have this circular hall here um, that surrounds a medical bay that's behind that frosted glass. So you get here. You have a medical bay here with this uh, decontamination and airlock. And then you actually have two beds here on either side for people to uh, wait to be recover, uh, to wait to be healed up or to uh, rest. Um, I want to see if you can technically use these to log out. Let's see here. Lie down.
Let's see what that says. It says do not. Um, so I guess you could technically use these two um, beds here to uh, log out of. However, these are very much uh, meant as patient beds, not crew beds. You also hear uh, at the back also have the actual medical bed. And this medical bed is, I believe, a tier two bed that you can use to possibly revive from. I don't know if that function is still in game yet, but uh, you might be able to revive out of this uh, tier two bed. However, on the uh, left side of here, of this of this little medical room, you have a storage room for medical supplies, which will become very, uh, very which is very much important because you uh, now now we have the uh, all the different med pens. So eventually, they'll implement that for med pen uh, storage and just even um, med gun refills and all the all the all those um, various med gun supplies. And over here, you actually have a doctor's office that they can look uh, they can look you over, perform medical exams. Well, we get more of the um, medical gameplay involved. And that's it for the bed bay room. So you do technically get two beds that uh, players can use to log out and sleep here. Um, however, I'd imagine they're more, at least those two beds are more or less meant for um, people who are sick and or uh, people that you might rescue on your journey. They're not primarily meant for the crew. However, here back towards the uh, middle of the ship, we have actually where the crew members are supposed to be. So let's go, uh, we'll cover that room uh, when we exit, but we actually have the five beds that the crew members uh, have right here. So you have one bed here in this little side wall, and then you have four beds here in this little middle area. You also have uh, everyone. Everyone has their own individual locker, as well as there's a little couch right there. Showers are here as well. And there's two showers for all uh, five crew members, plus your two guests if they are staying in the uh, med bay. You have a little rec room here with a hexagonal pool table, which would be. I think will actually be pretty fun to play with. You also have in this uh, little rec room here a uh, window to the outside world. So you can see what's going on out there, get an idea of what the outside environment is like while you're cruising through space in your little uh, rec room here. And you also have two toilets for the crew back here. Again, going over uh, to this side uh, on the habitation deck, uh, there's a little bit of a step down here in this little uh, submerged area, uh, is the mess hall with seating for six people. So this is very much, again, kind of signifying, it's really, the character is really meant for six people. You have five crew members and the captain, so you have six uh, seats here. Um, like I said, you do have the two uh, beds for people who are resting or uh you might pick up along your journey, but it's not really, those aren't really meant for long-term stays. But, once again, this is the uh, cafeteria, and there's actually a decent bit of food storage all around, so you won't, you won't starve on your long journeys. Plus, there are, like, there are uh, hardware modules down below in the cargo deck, or the technical deck, I believe. Is it called the technical deck? Let's see here. What does it say when it comes up? The subject. So there are, uh, so if you're doing any long distance uh, journeys in this ship, I would imagine on the subject, you at least have one cargo bay and that one cargo bay would hold more of your food uh, there. Still a side door here, by the way. Uh, while the crew all sleeps on the other side of the hall over here, the captain has his own private quarters here. He has his books, he has his little display. He has his own private window out into the verse. Um, this one uh, is situated more above than below. 
And he has his own little uh, shelves where he can display all the curios. Own little desk and chair. And then, Captain has his own private cabin back here. Own little bed, closet, suit locker, as well as his own private bathroom and shower back here. So, as always, the captain has the best accommodations on the ship, which is to be expected. All right, now we get to the bridge. Well, this is the lower half of the bridge. There are quite a few of components uh, scattered throughout here. Uh, but more importantly, on this lower half of the bridge, there are three seats. You have a uh, central pilot seat, and this is uh, the main pilot's seat. You also have two co-pilots uh, on either side. On the top part of this bridge, because there's a, this is actually a, this is one of the few ships in game that actually has a multi-layered bridge. In fact, I believe this is the only ship in game right now that has a multi-layered bridge. Um, up on this upper half of the bridge, you have a two. You have two co-pilots or support seats up here. They command different various things. You have a console up here for this uh, nav radar up here, as well as a command station up here that can also pilot the ship. You don't need to have a um, helmsman down below and up here. Uh, you really only need one of the two, but you have an additional command station up here if needed. Also, um, doing a bit of a uh, gunner seat. So, that is a support seat. I, that I do bring a good point of mind. Well, these are two technically, all these can be used for um, two separate support seats. The uh, left seat is the dedicated support seat. I did ha uh, remember that this right seat here is also the rem uh, remote turret seat for the uh, 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 for the turret on the top of the ship. Uh, the turret on the top of the ship is not uh, manned. It's a remote turret that is controlled from the bridge here. Now, we, uh, we did mention, by the way, um, that there's a manned turret at the bottom that you access through the sub deck. You access the top turret uh, from that support seat there. There are two other turrets that are going to be covered that are at the end of this hallway. Before we get there, though, you have escape pods here right behind the top deck of the uh, bridge. On the port side of the uh, technical deck up here, you have a repair room here where you'll be able to uh, extract various components and bring them out here and repair various components, tools, weapons, and the like. So this is very much a repair room to keep all your stuff uh, going as long as it can. And on the other side of that little uh, engineering repair bay, you also have two seats here for drone operators. And their drones will be loaded and stored here I guess in these little uh, airlocks, you could say, and the drones would shoot out of the airlocks and uh, perform their duties here. And whenever the drones need to be st uh, serviced, they could be serv uh, brought up into these little uh, areas here, and they can be serviced up there on those little decks. Also on the technical deck, you have a small hangar here that can basically really only support sub uh, snub ships on. You can try to fit a fighter in here, but it's not going to work out. Uh, you're, you pretty much are restricted to only fitting snub-sized uh, ships in this uh, bay up here. Namely, the Anvil Pisces is the ship that is uh, meant to go up here. Access to the hangar is through this door here. Uh, do be mindful. Obviously, if the if the if you're in space, if the hangar door is open, you will vent this entire hallway. Let's see here. Ah, weirdly, not anywhere near the doors. By the way, up on the technical deck, this panel here 
opens and closes the hangar bay door. So you have to go uh, the side opposite of those doors right there in order to open and close the hangar bay. So I'll go over here. Open this door. And you can climb up here into this little hangar bay right here. So you do have to, uh, so do keep in mind if you do have a park your little shuttlecraft in here, um, you have to go all the way over there to close or seal the airlock up. Or ideally, when you go to dock with the uh, Carrick, um, have someone here waiting for you to arrive, they open the door, you land, they close the door, and then once that door is closed, then you can exit or enter through this ship. Now, before we get to the elevator there to take us to the last uh, deck of this ship, we have the back half of the technical deck, which is where all of the fun happens, so to speak, with the engineering gameplay at least, as well as the two starboard turrets. So you have the starboard turret here, because we uh, this is the right side of the ship, so this is the starboard turret. And this also has, I do believe the starboard turrets uh, pop out a little bit once you enter them. And then you have a uh, pretty good visibility in the starboard turret, as well as uh, those are more uh, those are uh, laser repeaters. Where the bottom and lower turret, or the uh, to the top and bottom turret are uh, cannons. The side turrets are repeaters. So different weapons on the different turrets. Uh, the port turret is mirrored on the other side of that, on its own little hallway. You also have uh, in this little area right here a. See, I don't think that's component access there. But you can kind of oversee the engine from up here. You can see the engine bay in, uh, up here. And going through this door. Going through engineering itself. You can actually enter the engineering bay. You have the two, uh, your starship, uh, your Carex engines are right here on either side with their own little panels for monitoring stuff. Uh, component access for the quantum jump drive is right there. And there is this little ladder right here. I'm off. There we go. I do believe this is your power plant right here for the ship. And you have shield generators on either side more radar and life support equipment on either side here. And, interestingly enough, as I bring down the um, elevator here, you actually have fuel tank access back here. Plus, I believe these are the coolers. So you, uh, either side, you have access to the fuel tank. You can monitor how much fuel is in the tank, as well as do repairs on the coolers. And that is mirrored on the other side as well. And then you have this little uh, elevator here. So you can cart um, replacement parts as well as uh, various subcomponents on little carts right there all around. And again, that's the port side turret right there. Now, going to the top deck here. Uh, we get to the cartography deck. Cartography deck opens behind you, by the way, which is a diff which is a change of pace. Cartography deck here opens up into this giant map room here, so you can have multiple. Uh, people uh, gather around this giant hall of viewer, and you can map and uh, map out your uh, plot your course for your adventures. Uh, this is probably also a great room to have meetings for strategy meetings, where uh, you can take a whole you can take a whole bunch of guests in um, through a Pisces. You can have the guest um, board a Pisces. Pisces can land. You take you uh, um, disembark them from the Pisces, bring them up into this room with all your crew, and you can go ahead and then. Give your little briefing here 
around a Hall of Viewer map to show you where, where everyone's supposed to go and all that fun stuff. So, this is a really cool room. Um, hopefully, when exploration gameplay becomes more of a thing, uh, eventually this room will be fully uh, flushed out and implemented, and we'll be able to actually use it in all of its glory. Beyond that um, room back there where you do all your mapping and planning out, uh, there is actually another set of airlocks here to either side of those doors. So there's an escape, there's a escape pod on either side of this upper room here. Plus you have two suit lockers because... You have an airlock here. So... You have a window into the outside view on top of the ship. However... Opening that door leads you outside the ship, so do keep in mind. Uh, you want to be careful about that. You also be careful because this is the hangar bay door. So, you want to be very careful uh, when you're walking out here that you're not walking into an open door, uh, open hangar bay. Uh, there is enough room, by the way, if you are careful, to walk along this rim of the hangar bay here. So if you are on a planet side, if you're on a planet side and the hangar bay is somehow stuck open due to a bug or something, uh, you can actually walk along this edge here if you are careful. In fact, I would probably walk like this, where you're kind of like pointing yourself into the um, railing there, and you'll be safe. In fact, let's can't even do something really fun, by the way, with the Carrick. Can actually, and by the way, that's a one of the Carrick's uh, maneuvering thrusters up there. So that's how big they are on a ship this size. You can walk up and be right over the uh, the command station on the uh, second deck of the upper deck of the bridge. That. Zoom out as far out as we can. And once I get around to uploading proper thumbnails for all these videos for posterity, um, I'll put that on there. Oh, it looks like you can technically also climb up here. If you need to do service on these uh, guns up here, you could technically use that um, little bit of a ramp and to climb up here and do service on um, this upper turret. Yeah, so you can. So this is uh, definitely it's definitely a uh, fun ship to walk around, especially on the upper deck here. But it's time to get to the other ships. Uh, Anvil doesn't really have any other really larger ships. Uh, most of their other ships are kind of small. I wonder what Hughes does. Okay, I just, I was just thinking, there might have been at one time, or maybe I'm maybe misremembering, uh, but there was a, sometimes a way to actually open and close the hangar bay from the exterior up here, but that eh, just could be my uh, memory going. Anyways, pop open the door here. Uh, we're going to make our rounds uh, back here. Past these upper airlock doors here. Call the elevator. Uh, thankfully, the elevator has remained. I guess no one has bothered to explore the Carrick while we were gone. We're going to go all the way down through all the various decks, down to the subfloor. Back where the armory is. Back through the cargo bays right there. Back through the docking collar room right there, up to the ramp. And the ramp is going to be your main way to get 
on and off this ship planet side, or really all the time. The small docking collar, I believe, like I said, that's gonna be, it's probably going to be a very long time since uh, before they implement that. So I wouldn't be surprised if you uh, were just going to be using the, the giant ramp here to get in and off, on and off this ship. And for a big ship, that's, it is kind of annoying that your only real entrance on uh, most places is going to be through that ramp. Now for the Carrick, um, people love the Carrick. And it is a good ship for larger groups. Or for people who are definitely want to, to play with larger groups. Definitely a good ship for that. It's definitely going to be a great ship for exploration uh, when that comes when that comes a thing. Uh, just keep in mind that the Carrick is kind of expensive, so if you want to buy it, it's definitely worth it. But keep in mind, uh, you can't while you can't technically fly it solo. Uh, it's such a large ship that you're going to want to at least have a couple of people with you to at least man two of the turrets for self defense, and really it's meant for group play. But you can't fly it solo if you really just feel like flying it solo. It's not the worst ship to fly solo, but you definitely want to fly this as with a group. Uh, next up is a ship that you really almost have to fly solo uh, with a group, with uh, another person to make it effective, and it's the Hurricane. This is actually a very old Anvil Aerospace design, uh, back when Anvil Aerospace was technically Case Aerospace. Pilot has access to only two guns here at the nose and the majority of the firepower of the ship is located within that turret up above where the turret gunner has access to four size three guns so very much with this ship the idea was um the turret gunner is going to be doing most of the uh dealing most of the damage and the pilot is mostly going to be focused on doing maneuvers to get that turret on target that's how, obviously, the pilot, if they can make a strafing pass, uh, he can line up, get a couple of uh, shots off with the uh, guns before they overheat, and then immediately switch back to uh, letting the turret do most of the damage. Obviously, if the turret uh, burns through its energies and the gun is overheating, the pilot can then switch back to using his two guns to uh, lay down at least a little bit of pressure, but it's very much so... This is very much a ship where you need two people to have that play in between the pilot and the turret gunner. Because uh, otherwise, without that second crew member, you're losing the majority of the ship's firepower. A uh, ship does also have four size two missiles, but again, missiles are kind of iffy. So, Hurricane, uh, it is a beautiful looking ship. People have a lot of fun with their Hurricanes. But you definitely, absolutely have to have someone to play with to make this ship worthwhile. So, that's my recommendation with the ship. Uh... So, can't really give it a hard approval, but if you know if you have someone else you want to play with reliably, it's not a bad option. Obviously, only one of, by the way, I should mention, obviously only one of you needs to own the ship of the pair. So, if you have someone who own, owns a Hurricane, uh, don't bother buying it if they're on a lot. Um, just ask if you can just crew it because I'm quite sure they'll be happy to have a person to crew that Hurricane with you. That, I was about to go into that Apex Hall and 2 over there. However, I just remembered there are actually a couple of other smaller ships up here that we have to cover. Hawk will be the last ship we cover before we go into Apex Hall 3. We have up here the Pisces. We have the regular Pisces and the medical Pisces. These are the snubcraft that are meant and purpose-built to, uh, purpose to fit in with the Carrick and its little uh, hangar bay up on the top deck. You have the Pisces here. Uh, this is, I believe, the base Pisces. It might be the Expedition. Yeah, they only have two Pisces on. Uh, okay, this is the Expedition version. So there is a base Pisces and a Pisces Expedition. Uh, the only difference between the base Pisces and the Pisces Expedition, I believe, are a pair of extra guns. So, Expedition has four guns, I believe size one. And the regular Pisces has uh, 
two guns. I think they both have at least uh, a pair of size one missiles. Uh, Pisces is really good for uh, is definitely a really good fitting uh, snub craft for people uh, going around the verse. I do believe that it, it is while it is a quote unquote snub craft. I do believe the Pisces has a quantum dr drive. And in fact, no, the Pisces does have a quantum drive. It is a it is a snub sized ship. Uh, and that it could fit into a lot of ships as like a, a snub as a uh, snub craft or a craft that you la launch from a lot of ships, but it is itself not a snub craft. It is just a very compact ship. Uh, there is room for four SEU of cargo, so you can do you can definitely use this ship as a standalone ship to do box missions and do a little bit of light cargo hauling. Uh, you also have two jump seats to either pick up passengers or ferry people around, uh, friends. And you have a pilot seat up here with uh, decent visibility up and down. Uh, Anvil ships are notorious for lacking side-to-side -side visibility. Um, that's just a feature of all Anvil ships. But they do tend to have um, displays on either side. So at least they give you two additional displays on the sides. Uh, otherwise, Anvil Pisces um, definitely is, is a... I would recommend it as a starter ship. Uh mainly because of the interior cargo space you get, plus you get two little jump seats that can be used to carry friends around. And it does have a decent bit of firepower for a starter ship. Uh, it's a good all-around starter ship. Uh, definitely not combat-focused. Uh, if you want something more combat-focused, get a Mustang. If you want something that's a bit more utilitarian, get a Pisces. Uh, you have the C8R Pisces here, and this is the medical variant. Uh, medical variant... Uh, its weapons loadout is the base as the standard Pisces. So your standard Pisces is going to have two guns in the nose, two missiles on the side. Uh, unlike the Expedition variant over there, obviously they're missing two guns here at, on the side as additional guns. However, what you get with the C8R Pisces Rescue is this. This is a medical bay. This is a Tier 3 medical bay, so you're not going to be bringing people up to full recovery, but at the very least you can take care of those uh, very uh, pesky uh, tier 3 injuries that can uh, sneak up on you. So you can take care of the light, uh, the lightest of the injuries, plus more importantly, get your health back up to full and stabilized. You also have um, some, su uh, some supply cabinets up here, so you can uh, store uh, your various uh, dr uh, drug, your uh, medi pens, and I believe you can also store here the, um, like I said, uh, supplies for your uh, med guns and the like. So you can definitely heal people up here uh, to get them even into the Pisces to be fully healed up later. You also have a jump seat for your either the person you rescued or uh, you can operate as a two-man crew. And that's uh, something I would actually uh, highly suggest with this ship. You can have a pilot up here who keeps an eye on the situation, and you can have a dedicated second uh, crew member back there who's either a dedicated medic, or if you, the pilot, want to be a medic, uh, you can have a second person here as a, basically as an escort, um, as an escort, and he provides cover for you while you take care of your uh, medical treatment. Or, vi again, vice versa. He could be the medic, and you can, as the pilot, also basically uh, carry a rifle or two and provide overwatch for the medic while he does his job. Also, with all medical beds, they have, a dead, uh, they have a panel here for respawning and the like. Although, I don't think the Pisces can respawn. This is very much sort of a thing where you can load someone up on here and then you can perform the medical treatment from here. Otherwise, it's a Pisces. Um, nice little snub craft. Great ship if you want to start the medical career. I would recommend... This is a relatively new ship. So, I would, if you want to get into medical uh, as a starter profession... Uh, C8 or Pisces, go for this over the Cutlass Red. Uh, mainly because it's a smaller ship, more, it's a bit more subtle. Uh, you, only, you really are only going to be rescuing one person at a time. Uh, most situations, you're not going to be rescuing more than two people at a time. Uh, highly recommend this for your starter medical ship. Lastly on this deck here, before we go into the side halls here. We have the Anvil Hawk. This is a bounty hunter ship, and its landing gears are 
a bit oddly displayed. Uh, because this is actually the ship in its flight configuration. That's why the landing gears are a bit odd. Uh, ship just spawned in funny, that's all. Cockpit is up there. And you kind of like uh, get like uh, the cockpit, I believe, the seat comes down and you get like sucked into it. This ship is interesting because it has six size one guns. So you're very much uh, relying on quantity of guns over uh, the size of them. So six size one guns. Uh, two of them are distortion guns for disabling ships, and then four of them are cannons for attacking ships. And I believe it also has an EM a small EMP in the ship, as well as its piece de resistance for a bounty hunter, a prisoner pod, that's back here. It's a little bit difficult to access it uh, because uh, it wants you to rent the ship rather than like get access to it like right here. Um, but there is a prisoner pod that uh, a prisoner seat that pops out here. You load the prisoner onto the seat, and the prisoner gets sucked up into that little uh, tail piece, uh, little tail pipe, up towards right around here, and you can transport the, or your lone prisoner to a holding cell or the whatever uh, holding area where they're dropped off at to be dealt with. Otherwise, that is the Anvil Hawk. Uh, good. It's another um, intro-level bounty hunter ship. Whereas the Titan is very more the uh, Aegis Titan is more meant to carry multiple prisoners. Um, this is very much meant to deal with a single prisoner um, and a bit more of a higher a uh, higher value prisoner because this has more weapons and the EMP to deal with harder bounties. So very much a less an FPS. Um, Let's grab a bunch of low-level prisoners and cart them off. This is very much a 1v1 high-value target uh, bounty hunter ship. Even with the, uh, even though the fact that it carries uh, multiple uh, guns uh, that are slightly smaller, uh, it's just the sheer number of guns plus two of them are dedicated distortion weapons are going to make your bounty hunting experience with this ship a bit more potent than your uh, Adventure Titan. Now we enter the side halls after that very long uh, center hall there. Mainly because the Carrick is just that massive of a ship. The Carrick is a very massive entry level ship, uh, very massive ship, one of the largest in game. Now, this is interesting. In fact, let's, let's see at the map here what we have left to go through. Okay, yeah. We have one room dedicated, dedicated entirely to the um, Horde series, so that's why. There's an entire hall there. But over here, we have a couple of the more expensive anvil ships, along with a lone Spartan, which is interesting. Over here, we have the FC, or the F8C Lightning. Oh, this is the FA Lightning. There is a F. A, there's an F-8C Lightning, which is the civilian variant. This is the A, which is the military variant. This ship cannot be bought. I do believe it has to be... Well, it's weird. You can buy this ship uh, multiple ways. Uh, you can spend a crap ton of money uh, to get a certain level of very high-end concierge, and they'll give you one of, this sh one of these ships. Or... I do believe there was an event uh, fairly recently where you could hunt down a dev who would drop a ticket to allow you to buy one on the website. So, there are ways to technically buy the ship, but you just can't go onto the website and just buy one. Also, I believe um, whenever Squadron 42 comes out, uh, you have to basically progress through the Squadron 42 storyline, and at a certain point in the Squadron 42 um, storyline, you'll be able to uh, get access to the ship, and then you'll be able to also, I think maybe possibly later on in the story, it's not 100% clear, uh, there will come, but there will come a point later on in the story where then you can then buy the ship in the PTU. So this is very much meant to be earned in, the, in Squadron 42, 
And that's what that's how I'm gonna try to aim to get the ship. I wanna play through Squadron 42, and then I wanna earn my ability to buy one of these through Squadron 42. But FAC uh, Lightning, or FA8 Lightning, uh, just loaded to bear with multiple guns. I believe there's a total of eight guns on the ship. Uh, most of them are laser cannons, but there are two repeaters here uh, towards the nose. Uh, various size of cannons, too, for the laser cannons. Plus, it has a crap ton, I believe, of size. Uh, I think there's like eight size eight uh, two missiles. So, this is very much a heavy fighter meant to fight uh, Van Duel heavy fighter ships. And with all kind of these uh, heavily armored he uh, heavy fighters, these can also probably deal easily with larger non um, combat ships. Like these could, this could probably easily take out um, like trans like uh, medium sized transport ships with all this armament by themselves. Also, it's a single seat uh, ship, which also is uh, important to note. There's a ship that has similar armament for the uh, Hornet series, but that is a twin. That is a two seat si ship. Back here, we have the ultimate dropship, whereas the Cutlass Steel is like a smaller dropship, and then you also have the. Aegis uh, Redeemer gunship. We have the largest dropship in the game for when you absolutely need to carry almost an entire server full of people somewhere, and that is the Valkyrie. Valkyrie also ha doubles as kind of a bit of a gunship. Pilot has control of these two guns up here. There is a manned turret down but here. There are remote turret operated uh, guns here on the wing tips. There's a door gun there that we will cover later. I do believe that's it. Valkyrie uh, also has a huge cargo bay. This is Besides the, I want to say, I want to say besides the C8, besides the C2 um, Hercules, this might, and the uh, M2 Hercules, possibly the A2 Hercules, this might be the only other ship able to carry a Valkyrie, uh, or yeah, a Spartan uh, ground vehicle. So you could, uh, you could definitely fit two Cyclones in here. Uh, this is very much meant as a uh, C1... This is basically the C-130 of Star Citizen. Definitely a lot of cargo space back here for ground vehicles, which is going to be useful because besides having uh, two uh, door gunners here to also provide additional fire support out these side doors, you have a crap ton of drop sheets for infantry, and that's the main um, purpose of this ship. It's to drop a whole lot of ground troops into a hotly contested area and deploy ground vehicles out the back, deploy troops out the side doors, or beside, deploy troops out the rear ramp, and provide them covering fire while doing so. So you have five seats per wall for uh, ten seats in this room. Ten seats for here. So you have 20 uh, seats that are just infantry, just for this room alone, plus whatever seats are in the APCs that you bring along, so you could potentially have like up to like twenty eight potential uh, infantry loaded up in this ship, which is again like half a almost a it's a you could potentially have like a quarter of a server just in this one ship full of MP uh, full of players, and that's just sitting down in drop seats, not standing up on by the lonesomes, which they can also do, and that's just. An insane amount of infantry, and well, I'm just gonna flat out tell you right now before I continue this tour, don't buy the ship unless you own an org that is very much FPS focused. Otherwise, they, you're just going, it, you're just wasting the ship. Uh, should also mention back here, this is the access to the lower turret that we saw earlier. Go through this uh, drop seat room back here. Uh, again, real quick mention: you have two door gun, you have a door gun on each side. Provide a little bit of fire cover out those side doors. 
you also have this ladder up here, and this ladder takes you to the actual um, crew area of the ship. You have a top turret access here that we, we you can't see from down below. Uh, this is more or less meant to protect the ship from threats from up above, so any other fighter aircraft. And then you have, I believe, five beds? Yeah, you have five beds for the crew of this ship. Um, I don't... I want to say that's enough to man... Because you have the pilot up here, who has decent visibility. You have the two, you have the right and left remote turret there for three. Four, five, yeah. So you have enough beds uh, just to man uh, the all the turrets on the ship. Uh, you have a little food station right here. You have the... The lone bathroom for all five people here, um, plus whoever has to use the bathroom down there uh, for the uh, infant for the, all the uh, infantry down below. Uh, so hopefully not. Hopefully there won't be a Congo line trying to get to the bathroom there. But and hopefully everyone before they do their uh, FPS uh, before they even before they even board this ship to go under FPS drop goes goes to the bathroom because otherwise that single bathroom is going to just get flooded. And that's pretty much it. Like, that's pretty much all there is to the Valkyrie. It is, there is a lot of cavernous space in such a large ship. But again, as a transport ship, that's kind of what you want. And once again, I will uh, reiterate. Uh, it's a large ship meant to transport a whole lot of people and ground vehicles into an area. Uh, there is zero point to owning the ship unless you own a organization or a, or, or a part of an organization that has a lot of players who like to do ground combat. Otherwise, you're just wasting a whole lot of money, uh, either AUEC or even real life money on a ship that you're never gonna get its full potential out of. Now, speaking of the uh, Spartan APC that I mentioned earlier, Anvil has a ground vehicle chassis system called the Atlas Platform. And the Atlas platform has been ad uh, adapted into various different uh, vehicle types. The Sp Spartan here is not the first variant of Atlas that we got in-game. Uh, but it is probably, I think, right now, uh, one of the more useful ones. Uh, the Spartan here is a APC variant. It has eight seats here. As well as some windows to the outside world here through these... Uh, little windows here. And this is your, like I mentioned, APC variant. Room for eight people. There is a rear ramp and two side ramps. So your infantry can disembark in the most advantageous position to give them cover. So obviously if you're receiving fire from, say, this left side here, disembark to the right, use the APC as cover. It's pretty self-explanatory. Also the APC does have uh, two gun racks here for the pilot to store uh, rifles if the uh, if the driver of the APC needs to disembark. Plus, I believe uh, the APC uh, APC driver has access to the remote turret as a remote turret. We're gonna double check this. If the there we go, driver seat. I know for a fact that the APC driver can use the twin Gatling gun turret up above while driving. But I do not know if the uh, if he could basically park the APC and then, while it's parked, enter a remote turret mode. I see your power on. I see your close exterior. There we go. Enter remote turret. And good. Thankfully, it won't let me fire the remote turret in here. So you can definitely use, uh, definitely drive the APC to uh, where you want the troops to disembark, have them disembark out of the safest possible exit, and then while they are disembarking, use these twin Gatling guns here to lay down covering fire and hopefully even knock out some of the infantry before the uh, your enemy infantry, before your own infantry engages them. Definitely a fun vehicle, and one that I want to get myself uh, when I eventually get an org. Uh, when I get when I get an org together 
and whenever the uh, player servers are big enough to actually re reliably uh, host as many people. Because it is a little bit of a sketch right now. There are, while, there, while you can't get uh, 100 people per server, uh, getting enough room for 100 people, or not enough room, but getting enough room for like, a large group of people sometimes is a bit of a pain because of server caps, and uh, you only might have space for like 8 people, but, or like 4 people. But regardless, uh, this is a fun ship. This is a fun ground vehicle to drive around if you need to get a whole lot of people from point A to point B uh, in relative se security. Plus, I do believe eventually these ladders will work and you'll be able to climb on top. I don't think they work, work right now, but they are supposed to eventually. That being said, um, another reason why uh, I also might not want to get the ship uh, right, get this ground vehicle right now is um, the all ground vehicles, especially the more the bigger and larger and more expensive ones, um, they are relatively cheap to earn in game. The amount of AUEC they cost in game versus how much you spend online with uh, real money uh, is not very good. Uh, you, you can easily earn the money to buy these in game for the uh, amount of uh, real life money that you would spend on them. Whereas some of the larger ships take way longer to earn uh, with the in-game money than it is, uh, relatively speaking, to buy them with real-life money. Um, just a ratio of how far your dollar goes for AUEC value of ship. Sometimes it's a bit wonky uh, with the ground vehicles, where the ground vehicles are way more expensive for what they are worth in-game. So, don't really can't recommend buying any of the ground vehicles in-game unless you love them. Uh, or... Like I said earlier, you find yourself using them a lot, and they're not really that e too expensive anyways on the online store. Like, if they're only, like, if they're, like, relatively cheap on the online store and you're constantly finding yourself uh, buying them, then maybe you spend the money and just pick it up. But here we go. Um, last haul of Anvil today. And it's nothing but Hornets. Uh... Anvil loves its Hornets, and this is very much a showcase of the different variants. So, let's go for the... Let's see here. That's the base Hornet right there, and that's the... Okay, perfect. I know how I wanted to uh, do this. So, we're going to go with the base Hornet here, and then go to the various uh, variations all throughout. Base Hornet has missile racks underneath this uh, intake shape is intake here i do believe these are they have like eight size one missiles so they do they do use smaller missile sizes but the uh do at least have access to missiles here with the hornet hornet has two wing mounted uh guns however the base hornet does actually have the ability to mount a nose turret underneath uh the nose here I do believe also they can mount a uh, individual gun also underneath the uh, nose here, as well as the option to mount an additional gun on the top right here, on a uh, basically a uh, center line mount here on the top of the ship. However, mounting a, sir, a center line uh, gun on the top of the ship removes the Hornet's ability to carry um, two SU of cargo. So, I don't know if there's a way to access the internal cargo from like, if you climb up on it or not, but there is supposed to be a little cargo space in there um, that you will lose if you mount a turret up on there. Other than that, uh, otherwise, uh, the Hornet is a medium fighter. Compared to the Aegis Saber, the Hornet is a bit more durable. It's a little bit slower, a little bit heavier. Um, it can mount, I believe, a little bit more heavier um, weaponry, though. And it's definitely a bit more, and it's definitely quite a bit more durable. Uh, I will cover the super last because it is a beast all of in its own. Hornet Wildfire is a base Hornet with uh, different mounts attached. So it doesn't. I don't believe the uh, base Hornet here has a chin mount. Uh, currently mounted. I think you might be able to buy that as an optional thing for this. Uh, it does, however, have two ballistic uh, guns on the wing tips. Plus, it has a spinal uh, mount here for a size 4 Gatling gun. 
So the Hornet Wildfire is very much a ballistic-only variant of the Hornet, with an additional gun. There we go, Hornet Tracker. Uh, this has the chin-mounted extra gun that I was uh, mentioning earlier, with additional two guns on the wings there. I do not believe the Hornet Tracker, however, can mount the extra gun on the center mount there. Because the Hornet Tracker, instead, on the center line mount, it has a uh, ray dome for uh, basically additional uh, radar power. So this is very much a quote unquote. Uh, best way I can describe it is sort of like a mini AWACS, um, or basically sort of like an ups, uh, an upgraded uh, radar version of the Hornet that can uh, seek and detect. Uh, any hidden enemies that might be nearby, or get a better um, idea of like what the situation is uh, with its more powerful uh, radar array, and then relay that information to its uh, wingmates. So there is that. Plus the uh, Hornet uh, tracker again has that additional uh, mount here that's already pre-filled with a uh, gun. Which is something you might want to consider with the. Uh, before I go on, so you might want to consider with the wildfire. Uh, you might uh, in game buy a energy gun, like an energy repeater, and put it underneath the nose, uh, just so you're not entirely reliant on ballistic weapons, because uh, you can run out of ballistic ammo mid fight, and that's bad. Running along the back wall here because why not? Uh, it's been a while since I actually got to the back wall of that AE. Actually, cut through the middle there. We get to the Hornet Mark II. Hornet Mark II is not available for purchase in game. This is the upgraded Hornet that the uh, military, uh, the UEE military uses currently. I do believe this is. Pro I'm going to take. A I'm going to take on a limb and assume this is the Hornet variant that you will get in Squadron 42. So, it's an upgraded Hornet. Uh, the other Hornets that we got currently are the older style of Hornets uh, that the military was using for a while, and then they went for, uh, then sort of how uh, sometimes like, the militaries will sometimes offload old airframes onto the civilian market for hobbyists and enthusiasts. Uh, they went ahead and then and unloaded their older Hornets onto the market and then gave us the FA-7A and then Anvil went and made the Mark II for the uh, military. So Mark II for the military has two guns here on a nose mount there. Two size 4 mounts on the wingtips, which are which is pretty insane. As well as it looks like a turret with two size 2 guns on top. So lots of firepower for the uh, military Hornet, as makes sense. Plus it looks a bit more um, slimmed down and... Possibly maybe up armored doesn't look like it too much, but otherwise it's a hornet in all other features Don't expect you cannot buy this again. This is squadron 42 only Hornet ghost Is the stealth variant of the hornet uh, This has basically stealth armor and like a signature reducing components so this is the more stealthy variant if you want to sneak around and then do an ambush-style attack. Uh, the Anvil Hornet Ghost only comes with two guns as stock. However, like all Hornets, I do believe it has the ability to mount a spinal mount turret and a uh, nose mount turret, uh, nose mount gun right there. Now we get to what is arguably the Killer Hornet, uh, the upgunned and ridiculous Super Hornet, the FC F7CM, very much sort of like the uh, real life uh, Hornet. Because uh, if you follow uh, naval aviation or DCS world, you know that the F uh, the Hornet is actually a real life aircraft, the F18C Hornet or Legacy Hornet nowadays. Can't believe we're calling the F can't believe we're calling an aircraft that new a legacy, but time marches on and stops for nobody. So you have the F-7C, um, or the F-18C Hornet, which was a single-seat Hornet, 
that was standard. And then when the Navy went to the F-18, F uh, E, and F Super Hornets, uh, I believe the E is the uh, standard, they went to a um, two-seat configuration for most of their Hornets, with only some of the Super Hornets being a single seat. And thus, CIG followed in their footsteps, and their, the F-7CM Super Hornet for, from CIG is also 2C, like most of the Navy's Super Hornets today. Also, um, of note, the FC7CM uh, Super Hornet uh, comes stock with the nose turret uh, mount here. I believe these are two size uh, one guns here for its nose mount. It also has two uh, size three uh, gun mounts here on the wings. And up top, it has a twin size two uh, repeater, laser repeater mount up there. Plus your standard complement of missiles that all Hornets have. However, um, of note, the co-pilot can actually take control of the turret and operate the turret and fire it uh, independently of the pilot. I don't know if it's currently the case that the pilot can control all the weapons at the same time. Uh, a while back, whenever I was flying this more often, the pilot wasn't able to control all the weapons. I don't know if uh, recent changes have made it so that the pilot can't control the turret on the F-7CM Super Hornet, uh, but I know for a fact, for certain, that the uh, Rio or the rear, uh, the rear, uh, the rear seat operator here does indeed have control over the turret and can operate independently of the pilot. The Super Hornet is limited uh, when it uh, is not a limited haul ship, but the F-7CM Super Hornet does not. Um, go on sale uh, that often. It only goes on sale usually around uh, IAE and Invictus. So if you really love um, the Hornet and you really uh, want to splurge the extra money, uh, go ahead and get the Super Hornet. Uh, the extra firepower is really useful as well as the ability to have a second uh, person um, man the rear seat. Uh, a lot. It's a lot of fun. Uh, that being said, uh, the regular Hornet has a lot of fans, and the ability, and the fact that you can basically get um, a regular Hornet basically up to the firepower levels of a Super Hornet with uh, by putting on the spinal mount and then also a uh, gun underneath the nose. Uh, don't overlook the regular Hornet too. I can also highly recommend uh, getting the regular Hornet uh, if you want to be a bit more reasonable with your money um, and you're looking for a uh, your first uh, dedicated combat ship. Uh, I do believe the stock Hornet is cheaper than the stock Saber, but I think the Saber from Aegis Dynamics is roughly close in price to the regular Super Hornet. Uh, just because the stock uh, Hornet only has two guns. So I think uh, you might have a price advantage if you buy a stock Hornet. And keep in mind... You can buy the guns in-game with in-game money. In fact, I would recommend doing that, um, possibly really going for the cheaper Hornet, and then buying the extra firepower in-game with in-game money. Um, gives you something to look for, work forward towards, and really right now with, uh, with Star Citizen, um, you really want things to work forward, uh, work towards in-game. Give yourself a reason to spend your money. And that's it for the Hornets at um, Anvil Day. Uh, we now get to the Hollow Viewer, and... Boy, oh boy, does Anvil have quite a lot of ships that are in the um, pipeline. Uh, they're just as bad as RSI uh, that'll be on showcasing on Sunday. Uh, granted, RSI at the very least, uh, CIG has confirmed with RSI that with all the ships they are producing, they're trying to get a pipeline going where they can just knock out one large RSI ship after another. So... Fingers crossed, hopefully, um, at least all the RSI ships will be uh, with us relatively soon, but that also, unfortunately, means I think that these upcoming animal ships that you will see are not going to be visible for quite a while. Also, before I forget, uh, there are the other two um, in, uh, Atlas platform chassis for the uh, Anvil ground vehicles. The Ballista is basically a mobile SAM site. It does have 
two uh, small gun, uh, two I believe size two guns on a turret up there for um, self defense against any ships that get up in close. But the ballista is very much a mobile uh, SAM site with two size nine torpedoes and at least six. No, yeah, six. No, eight. Eight size, I believe, five uh, torpedoes up there as well. So this is very much a mobile SAM site, uh, especially against uh, larger ships. So this is very much a SAM site on wheels. Whereas if you want something that's more like the um, real life equivalent of a Shilka rather than a um, Osa back there for a uh, SA-8, the, um, the Centurion here is your be uh, best bet. It does have two um, pilot controlled guns up here, but its main piece de resistance is the um, operator controlled I believe these are size 5 uh, energy repeaters um, back here. And this is these will very much shred anything that's uh, fast moving and lightweight uh, with a huge hail of bullets. So, all between the Ballista and the Centurion, um, you're going to be encountering more smaller ships in game than larger ships. And even four size 5 uh, laser repeaters can really damage larger ships uh, over time. So, between the Ballista and the Centurion, I pick up the Centurion. Uh, if you already have a Centurion, maybe a Ballista. However, with a lot of these larger ground vehicles, you are going to need an... You're going to need a Hercules C2, um, at the very least, to transport them. So, unless you have a Hercules C2, uh, don't bother with, any, with either of these um, two ships, because you won't be able to get your ground vehicle into combat. So... Definitely don't pick up either of those ships, uh, either of these ground vehicles, unless you have like a C2 or something very similar in order to get them into the field. Or if your org has one and you know you'll be able to get access to it. And keep in mind, if your friend has access to the C2 that transports them to the battlefield, keep in mind you want to make sure um, they're going to be someone who's going to be playing for a while. Because you don't want to buy, you don't want to spend real money on these ground vehicles and then lose access to your only way to get them into the field. In fact, just buy these two ships in game with real in game money. They're not that expensive. Very useful for ground operations if you're operating with a crew of people, but not worth the uh, real life money. Back here, uh, we get to the Hall of Viewers. We have the Anvil Legionnaire. This is a boarding ship. Possibly can maybe double as like a smaller uh, drop ship, but its main purpose is to uh, go into enemy ship, go up to enemy ships, hack them, and then basically force dock onto that ship and deploy marines onto that ship. Now, I do not know if it is a large or a small docking collar in the front that it can dock with. Uh, I would imagine possibly it can do both large and small size docking rings. But that is something to note um, that this is very much a uh, ship that is, again, meant for a group or organization. Um, you're going to need Marines to actually use this ship to, because you're not going to dock, you're not going to use this ship to dock with a um, enemy ship and then you yourself go in alone and try to, like, solo a enemy ship. I mean, go ahead if that's your, if that's what you want to do, but I wouldn't spend the money unless you have, like, a group of, uh, FPS crew, uh, crewmates to actually do all the uh, dogfight, or actually all the FPS gunplay with. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste to get this ship just for yourself. Next up, we have a very interesting ship. This is the Anvil Liberator. Um, again, a nice ship that is meant for a single player. Um, but it is actually, I don't think there's that many people required to actually operate this effectively. Uh, mainly, you're using this ship to transport other ships from point A to point B, especially uh, smaller ships. So, this is definitely a useful ship, particularly if you are a org um, owner and you have a bunch of uh, smaller ships like Hornets or Gladiuses and Gladiators, and you want to, and you need to get them from one point in the. Uh, 
in the solar in the uh, universe to another. Otherwise, um, can't really really recommend this. Uh, it's really a ship meant to get other ship other smaller ships around the verse. You could technically use it also as like a mini uh, re repair station. Um, you'd only be able to repair uh, with your FPS tools. There's no dedicated repair system on here for other ships, but you can at least use this ship um, to land other ships to do uh, repair and refueling work by hand. Now, this is a ship that has been long in development, and there is basically no word of it. There's been very little word of it uh, ever since its announcement. This is the uh, Crucible. This is a dedicated large repair ship. And this ship is supposed to basically be able to fully repair um, almost any ship in the verse. Um, it has like repair arms that are supposed to pop out and repair other ships. It has a funky, funky circular bridge. Um, if you really want to want to run a one man repair operation, uh, this is your ship. Not a one man repair operation. If you want to run a major repair operation, um, this is the ship for it. Um, there is even a bay back here where you can land a fighter and then basically while the fighter is contained within the ship, fully work on it and fully repair it. However, since that level of, of repair mechanic uh, hasn't been really talked about, on top of the fact that no one has mentioned the ship in forever, um, if, you, if you do end up buying the ship, uh, don't expect it to come out for, like, two or three years. This is one of those ships that... Sort of like my... Uh, sort of like my, uh... Aegis, uh, Vulcan. It's a ship that's kind of been... Sort of abandoned wear. But not really. It's more like, uh... The mechanics haven't been implemented or designed yet. And you probably won't see it for, like... Years upon years. But it is available for IAE and... Don't expect to see this ship uh, in verse uh, until Invictus of next year, where it will most undoubtedly show up in the Anvil Aerospace uh, hollow model viewer room again for many, many IEs and Invictuses to come. And that's it for Anvil Aerospace Day. Uh, highly, ships, like, uh, ships I would recommend... Uh, the Pisces. The Pisces is a great starter ship. It's also a great snub craft. It can fit into a lot of other uh, larger ships. Definitely a, uh, with its 4 SEU of cargo space uh, and uh, actual little mini cargo bay, uh, you can use it to go around the verse, do box missions, and some other like starter exploration gameplay. C.A.R. Pisces is a great starter medical ship if you really want to get into the medical gameplay. Highly recommend that. Anvil Arrows, a decent uh, light fighter alternative to the Gladius. And uh, the Anvil Hornet's a great uh, all-around fighter if you want something that's a bit more uh, on the heavier side. And the good old Carrick, um, it's old, reliable, great large ship uh, for exploration. If you want to do long-range exploration, uh, you want to do trading, you can even use it for trading. But it's not really a dedicated trading ship, but you can use it for trading if you want to. Uh, but really with the Carrick, even with a ship as large as the Carrick, uh, because Garrett is so, the Carrick is so huge and large, uh, definitely try to earn in-game, uh, it's not the worst large ship purchase you can make, it's probably, I, I would say that the Carrick is the best large ship that you can purchase for your, va for your money and your value, but I wouldn't necessarily, uh, worry about buying it, uh, with real-life money, you can always buy it in, I would definitely have the Carrick as a ship, um, that you would want to earn in game if at all possible. So with that, uh, this is another uh, this is the IAE twenty nine fifty three for Anvil Aerospace. Uh, today, uh, the MISC is on the show floor on in the other hall, so I am going to make my way there for MISC, and I will see you all then and there to cover what they have today at the IE. So until then, this has been Lock OS, signing out.